One of the arguments that I hear a lot of uh, from people when I talk about equality in sport is that aspect of commercialisation, that the women don't bring in the money, they don't bring in the crowds. That's debatable, looking at the crowd last week at Eden Park. Um, it was brilliant, fantastic, 34,000 I think in the end. Uh, and, and because of that, they don't deserve to be paid no, the no, same. No, that's not right. That, that, that is fundamentally wrong in our books. Okay, so at the end of the day, the two things there, the, one of the reasons when, like, when you're in my job and you're going around all the players and you're saying, by the way, we're going to take a big chunk and allocate it to the women's game. And this is the point where Sevens win even in the Olympics. Like, it's like, what? And it's like, guys, think ahead. Why is AIG? Why are Adidas? Why are these global brands going to touch rugby if it's just males? So the, the argument they don't have commercial value is not correct. And in fact, I would argue your commercial value is massively eroded if you don't have both genders involved, you know, I think it's really important. So that, that's probably number one on the commercial value. It might be when the sponsor allocates their sponsorship, they might be still disproportionate depending on the age and stage and where it's at. But if you did a sponsorship of Sevens in New Zealand Rugby at the moment, how could you split that? Like it might be, the, I suggest it would be the other way around at the moment. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I, I don't agree that the lack of commercial value. Look, we know the Black Ferns, if they play three test matches in a row, the chance of them selling out Eden Park and Wellington, Canterbury, it wouldn't happen at the moment. But one day it will. But that's the point. You've got to forward, you forward think on this is where I'm coming from. So, so commercially, I think they do have value. Yeah, 100%. And the other part that are really, and this is what actually got the male players in New Zealand kind of really focused in on this, is you can't just look at it like that. Like, if you are asking a player to turn up and train five days a week and work to a schedule that full-time coaches, full-time trainers, SNC, managers, everyone else is full-time, they've all getting paid, they've all got a mortgage, they've all got a house, and you're saying, oh, but the athletes, which is the Olympic sports, right, the athletes don't get paid a decent wage. Like, where's the like, where are the values in that?